Pleasant good morning to everyone. Thank you, Logan, for su such a good job and being prepared so well and leading us in the singing. Thank you. Every aspect of worship this morning has been very edifying, and uh, thank all of you, and especially the brothers leading us in uh, the worship this morning. Been very uplifting. First Timothy 3, please. First Timothy 3. <clears throat> Beginning at verse 8, 1 Timothy 3, verse 8, and what the Holy Spirit reveals concerning deacons. Deacons, likewise, must be men of dignity, not double-tongued or addicted to much wine, wine or fond of sordid gain, but holding to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, let these also first be tested, then let them serve as deacons if they are beyond reproach. Women must likewise uh, be dignified, not malicious gossips, temperate, faithful in all things. Verse 12, let deacons be husbands of one wife, good managers of their children and their own household, for those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a high standing, great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. God, in his eternal wisdom and plan, created according to that plan a body of believers in his son, Jesus Christ, were created in Christ Jesus for good works by God, Ephesians 2.10. And God teaches in this plan, this eternal plan, that Christians are to congregate together as we are this morning on a day that he set aside for that, Acts 20 and verse 7. And the Lord teaches in this eternal plan that these uh, local bodies are to be organized. Some of the members in that local body are to be set aside uh, appointed, selected for specific responsibilities, certain responsibilities within that body. And so part of an organization. And so we have elders and deacons that are mentioned specifically in Philippians 1.1. And uh, we are blessed, very, very blessed in this congregation to be able to glorify God in that way. Uh, for a time, a congregation may function without elders and deacons, but we need to understand that until they are organized as God teaches, then they are not as God would have them to be. Titus chapter 1 teaches us that. Set in order that which is lacking, and that includes the elders and the deacons. We are blessed to have three deacons right now, and uh, we're very, very thankful for the work that uh, Mike and Kevin and Kelly do in this congregation, without the work that they do, without that work being done, this congregation cannot function as it does. We understand that, I hope. It cannot function as it does without the kind of work uh, they do being done on a regular basis. And so we're very grateful, and we need to thank these men uh, for the work they do as deacons. And of course, along with the work they do on a regular basis, they have their family responsibilities, they have the work responsibilities, they have many responsibilities uh, along with all of that. Sometimes people wonder, what do the deacons actually do? We know it's God's plan. We can see that in 1 Timothy 3 for a part of the local congregation's organization to be deacons. And there are certain spiritual criteria given for, for the church to appoint these men. But what do they actually do on a practical level, on a shoe leather level? What do they actually do? And I thought it would be good this morning just to mention some of the things that the deacons actually do in a congregation. It's kind of like with the giving. The Lord teaches us he's a giving God, and he expects his people to be giving people in various ways of themselves as well as financially. And sometimes it's good to point out what we're giving for. What are the needs? Such as Dan mentioning Simon Harris on Wednesday evening. 
that's good. The congregation needs what we're giving, needs to see what we're giving for. What evangelistic work, what missionary work is going on that we're giving for, as well as the local congregation here and its work. And I think the, the same should be done concerning the deacons and the elders. And so we asked Wayne Galloway to come one Sunday and give lessons on the responsibility of elders and the members to one another, because we need to see on a, on a practical shoe leather basis, the kind of things that they're doing and why they're appointed, as well as it being simply the will of God that we have elders and deacons. So here's just some of the things that the deacons do in this congregation. Always be mindful of the widows and the elderly and the infirm. Be alert to any needs, physical or spiritual, and offer any assistance for those needs within the congregation. Help the elders be alert to any of those needs within the congregation. Uh, make a special effort to greet visitors and offer any assistance. Provide a duty roster for each service. Uh, recruiting and coordinating teachers and substitute teachers. Setting teacher quarterly schedules. Providing curriculum approved by the elders. Manage classroom supplies and resources. Manage the resource room in coordination with the resource team. Organize and direct group activity. And there's a lot of time that goes into that work alone, the group activity. And hopefully you're supporting these groups. Uh, they're a very important part of this local congregation's work, the various groups that we're in. There are three, of course, right now, and every member of this congregation is in one of the groups, and we've delegated to the deacons the responsibility of overseeing these groups. Provide a prayer list, manage the website, uh, order communion supplies, overseeing the communion, uh, overseeing of communion on the table in the foyer. Uh, as you come in, having visitor cards printed available in the back of pews, making a record of and sharing the information from visitor cards, keeping a church directory current, maintain the alarm systems, building security during services, bulletin board management. Concerning the collection and the finances of this congregation, deposits have to be made, a balance has to be kept, financial reports has to be, have to be made, bills have to be paid on a regular basis, just like you do in, in your home, and a budget has to be created. Uh, in the building maintenance, oversight of the heating, the cooling, the thermostat setting, which is sometimes a controversial thing, uh, <laughs> electrical and lighting, water and plumbing, baptistry includes cleaning of this baptistry. Uh, parking lot and grounds, thanks, thanks to Michael for constantly doing the mowing and the snow removal for years, brother, thank you. Cleaning the building, cleaning supplies, restroom supply, supplies, bug spraying, pest control, service vacuum cleaners. Brethren, these are just some of the regular duties that the deacons carry on here. And that, again, that's along with all their duties at home, at work, and so on and so forth. And so we truly want to thank them for all the things that they do, and they could certainly use some help. They could use some help. And so, once again, we are asking in keeping with the teaching in Acts chapter 6, this body, this family, to look out among you, brethren, and uh, select from among you men, as it's stated in Acts 6, of good reputation, full of the Spirit and wisdom. And in 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, men who are blameless, beyond reproach, managing their household well, and all the other qualifications given by the Holy Spirit. They, as Brian pointed out, an excellent class, brother, this morning, as Brian pointed out, they must meet the Holy Spirit's criteria in order for us to truly be pleasing to the Lord in appointing these men to be deacons. 1 Timothy chapter 3, look back with me there, please, 1 Timothy 3. The, the Holy Spirit teaches us in verse 10 that these men must be proven faithful uh, as a disciple of Jesus Christ in general, uh, but specifically in the criteria given by the Holy Spirit here, in these godly attitudes, which I believe correlate with specific duties and responsibilities that they'll have as a deacon, and we've tried to point out some of those responsibilities. Verse 10 also teaches this. Let's read verse 10 again. Let these also be first tested. Let them serve as deacons if they're beyond reproach. 
beyond reproach. That term given by God, it's used of the elders as well, is an umbrella term, and it involves and encompasses their whole spiritual life. It literally means cannot be laid hold of, nothing to be grasped. And so if you look closely at the lives of these men, and of course, these men would encourage that. Jeff would encourage that. I would encourage that. Joe would encourage that. Uh, the deacons would encourage that because we want our light to so shine, we glorify God. Uh, if you look closely at their lives, uh, is there a sin they're currently involved in, they're, they're, they're unwilling to repent of, that they're presently committing, that you can grab hold of and say, see this? They're, they're not serving the Lord. They're not faithful. Their life is not consistent with their profession. That's, that's the idea of being beyond reproach. And again, it would encompass every aspect of their spiritual life, you see. So look at their lives, and again, they should encourage that. Those who serve the Lord want people to see Christ in us, hope of glory, so that they'll come to the Lord. Sometimes we're the only Bible they read. Our lives showing Christ in us the hope of glory. And then we encourage them by that example to read the Word of God, uh, actually, and lead them to the Lord in salvation. Beyond reproach, that doesn't mean that they weren't once dead in sin. We all were. Beyond reproach doesn't mean they're now sinless. None of us are. 1 John 1, verse 8. Beyond reproach doesn't mean he won't be accused of wrongdoing. Job, John the Baptist, Paul, Jesus, all the apostles were accused of terrible things. But all those accusations were proven false by their godly lives. As Jesus said, wisdom is vindicated by her fruits. Look at the fruit. Jesus said that in Matthew 7. Look at the fruit. What they say, look at what they do. And so wisdom is vindicated by her fruit. Uh, of course, Job, John, Jesus, Paul, all of those men accused of terrible things were vindicated by righteous, godly lives. The fruit showed just the opposite of the charge. But it speaks of their overall character. You can fully trust them in their profession of Jesus Christ. First Timothy 3, verse 12 God requires both elders and deacons to have a family, to have a family and be proven as faithful stewards of those families. Verse 12, let deacons be husbands of one wife, good managers of their children and their own households. A husband of one wife literally is a man of one woman, and simply put, more than none, less than two. As Brian uh, pointed out this morning, this, this particular qualification has been interpre interpreted variously, and, and all I can present to you is my understanding of this interpretation, of this uh, particular qualification, my interpretation of it, and, and that is from a positive standpoint, this qualification requires marriage. It requires marriage. From a negative standpoint, it forbids celibacy, that is, a person not to be married. And so I think here we see the wisdom of God in stating it the way he does. If Paul had simply said he must be married, uh, this would not exclude polygamy. If Paul had said not a polygamist, this would not require marriage. But saying it the way the Holy Spirit does, the husband of one wife covers both areas. And so a man is the husband of one wife if, number one, he has a wife. And number two, any previous marriage ended in the death of his spouse, Romans chapter 7. And number three, any previous marriage ended by putting his spouse away for sexual immorality, Matthew 19, 9. The only cause, the only cause given in Scripture for divorce sexual immorality. In Matthew 19, 9 is that passage that teaches that. 
But marriage is not the only requirement given here. 1 Timothy 3.12 also says he must be a, a good manager of his children and his household. A good manager of his children and his household. The word manager means to stand before, to preside over. And so headship is the idea. Is he truly the head of his family? Have you seen that? Does he truly preside over his family? But not only does he preside over his family, is he a good manager? God qualifies that by saying he needs to exercise authority in a respectful and honorable manner. Is this loving oversight? His management of his home is guided by God's management of his heart. His management of his family is directed by God's control of his heart. Wise, biblical, loving decisions are made always with the best spiritual interest of his family in mind. And in return, his family loves and respects him, and the fruit of such honor is evident. Again, look at the fruit. 1 Timothy 3.12 does not require his children to be Christians, but it does require respectful oversight and honorable management of his home. I think the correlation between this particular qualification and his work is easy to see, perhaps easier than any of them. You see the ability to influence people for good in his own home first. We see experience in dealing with problems in the lives of his own family first. We see his ability to lead a responsible life, set a good example, because on a regular daily basis, his, his children, his his spouse sees patience, discipline, self-control, love, sacrifice, all the fruits of the Spirit are seen in his family first on a regular basis. So how are elders and deacons to be selected? Well, with the exception of Acts chapter 6, involving the whole congregation, and Paul's teaching in Titus chapter 1 that the evangelists be involved in that process, at least the appointment process, the scriptures are silent as the twinkling stars as to how we select elders and deacons. There's no specific guidelines given on the selection of elders and deacons. And so it becomes then a matter of expedience, much like the command of the Lord in Matthew chapter 28, where he says, go ye therefore, make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I commanded you. Go is general. How are you going to go? Well, that's expedient. God doesn't spell out how to go. Ship, boat, car, by foot, that's expedient. What's the most profitable way to do that? You know, Paul used that term expedient in Acts 20, verse 20. In Acts 20, verse 20, when he said, I was determined to preach whatever was profitable. That's the meaning of the word expedient, profitable. What's the most profitable way for this to be done? We've suggested a way we believe is expedient. Is it the only way? Absolutely not. It's not. There could be other ways that are better than what we're suggesting. This is the way we're suggesting now when it comes to the selection of deacons but uh, we'd love to hear your input in, in future, Lord willing, future occasions when we'll be able to hopefully move forward again in appointment of more elders and more deacons. Understand, though, that God has not revealed in his word how to carry out the selection process. God teaches us to baptize, does he not? He says, baptizing in the name of the Father. Okay. Is that cold water or hot water? Is that salt or fresh? Is that running or still? We understand this baptistry is an expedient because God didn't specify the place. We understand this building is an expedient and practically everything in it, the bathrooms, the drinking fountains, Bible classes, the disassembly of the assembly into different classes. That's an expedient. It's the most profitable way to teach 
people on various levels the Word of God in keeping with the general command to teach them all things I taught you. And so we, we need to decide what's the most profitable way. Something that to help also drive home the point, synagogue assembly by the Jews. The synagogue setup, the whole setup was an expedient. Set up by the Jews, probably uh, Brian during the captivity. And by the time of Jesus, though, it had become an elaborate system with specific rules and regulations, and one could even be kicked out of the synagogue, John chapter 9. But it was an expedient. Jesus approved of it, so did the apostles. They made use of it. Expedients are something we live with on a daily basis. And I, make, I say all of that so we understand the selection process is an expedient. There's, we don't have specific information as to how to carry it out. We have the command to do it. But it's up to each congregation to determine consistent with, in harmony with, all biblical teaching. Uh, the selection of elders and deacons. It, it can't be specified. Sprinkling is not expedient because God specified immersion, you see. If it's specified, that's the only thing we can do. It, can't, it must be in harmony with God's word. It cannot be specified. It needs to be something that edifies and builds up and not tears down. And so whatever man is chosen, it needs to certainly meet all of that criteria and many other biblical principle criteria. This is one way. And we're open to other ways if you have suggestions. Right now, we're asking you to look out among you and select men in keeping with uh, the biblical criteria given 1 Timothy 3. Please pick up the sheet that's been handed out. Here's the expedient process that we're putting before the congregation in the selection of deacons, very similar to that of elders. Um, Number one, step one, congregation selects men according to the Holy Spirit's guidelines in 1 Timothy 3. The congregation would include all members of this local body. Children who are Christians are only permitted to select men if their parents consider them mature enough to understand the qualifications. Men involve God's purpose, the gravity of the occasion, and so on. Step two, write down, that is, each member. This is husbands and wives sometimes hand in slips together, but make sure it's your own individual selection. Each member, the names of all men you believe are qualified on a slip of paper, include your own name as the one making the selection. Uh, three, please. Give the names to one of the elders. Members may personally give their slips of names to these men at any time beginning today. And so to Jeff or to Joe or I, Beginning today, please. The elders will keep a list of those who've turned in names. All members of the congregation are to be made aware of the need for their involvement. We, we encourage the participation of all saints here. The men chosen must be selected by a simple majority of the members. That is 51%. If less than half the congregation selects a man, then he will not be considered. And I would, we, I would think... The elders are in agreement here that if less than half the congregation wants you to serve as an elder or deacon, do you really want to serve as an elder or deacon? And so your thoughts on that. Step four, the majority will be determined by those, by the number of those members who participate in this process by either choosing men or stating none or presently qualified. Next, next. On the back of your page, please, step five. Selection process will continue for two weeks beginning Sunday, July 23rd. Of course, that's today. Six, by the morning of Sunday, August 6th, if men are selected by a simple majority of the participating members, the elders will privately ask them if they desire the work. Could be they won't desire the work, and it will stop right there. Step seven, if these men desire the work, their names will be announced to the congregation on Wednesday, August 9th, August 9th. 
Step eight, time will then be given to allow the brethren opportunity to privately approach these men to ask questions, voice agreement or objection. These men would no doubt appreciate any comments that are supportive during that time. Uh, any objections must be scriptural and substantiated. Uh, and if others need to be involved, there's suggestions there as well. Consider the principle of Matthew 18, 16. This matter always is to be kept private uh, as long as possible. And so should any difference that arise between two brethren, private as long as possible. And following the teaching of Jesus in Matthew 18, most uh, those situations can be worked out most of the time. And step nine, if there are no scriptural objections, then the men should be set before the church on Sunday, August 20th. So that should be a week and a half uh, in, in from the time it's announced to the time they're appointed. And so this, this is the expedient way that we have set aside for this selection process to go forward. Again, we encourage all members to participate in this process. As we began the lesson, so we'll end the lesson. God in his eternal purpose carried it out through Christ Jesus, our Lord. He had an eternal plan and eternal purpose. Before the creation of the world, before the creation of the first man and the first woman, before God said, let there be light, there was an eternal purpose in the mind of God. There are many things involved in that eternal purpose, but the primary purpose is our salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, to help us be faithful, to help us serve the Lord as he would have us to serve him, to be the son and the daughter God always intended us to be. God says there needs to be fellowship. There needs to be joint participation, sharing in the things of his son accountability between brethren in that process of fellowship and to help that fellowship be as strong as it can possibly be god says in his infinite wisdom there needs to be an organization within that local body there needs to be shepherds pastors there needs to be deacons among the saints may god bless us in our efforts to glorify him in this process as well as all that we seek to do and serving him according to his word. Brother Logan has chosen a song of invitation. If you'd like to take this opportunity to come to the Lord in accordance with his eternal purpose in Jesus Christ and be remitted of all sin and have the peace that surpasseth all understanding in Jesus Christ of being baptized into him for remission of sins, I'd like to seek the prayers of the congregation here as a member of this body, James says, confess your sins to one another. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Would you come as we stand and sing, please? <laughs>